Shalom Rastafari again. Let's touch, let's go a little bit deeper into this. Uh, let's just uh, line this up right here. Um, Ine Ras Yadinos Tefari. Name. And once again, uh, Melkam Adis Ahmed, as well as uh, Lashana uh, Toba Reba. In other words, a uh, uh, happy new year. We're fully into the solar which is the Christos, which is the, the Bein Ha Elohim, Chaim Baruch Hu, um, which is the Son of God, speaking from Christina, the light, we're in the substance of it. You understand? And we're studying the shadow of it from Torah, right? Now, in uh, looking for some of the, the examples right here, okay, so we have this right here. Let's move this. Over, right? Let's move this I and I picture over right here, and let's put His Majesty right here. Okay. Now, why why are we doing this? Well, first of all, we will study from the true Ethiopian calendar that this particular the 17th of um, September, which we know as Rosh Hashanah, or the so-called Jewish New Year is also our Hebrew, we have to recognize it's the Hebrew feast, the feast of trumpets. So here we have, as you can see, this is, this is the part of the, the circle of the cipher that we're in right now. If we would um, move this a little bit up so we can just click on the fullness of it, right? You can see the fullness of it right there. This is, this is the circle, the cipher of the holy days. We're at Rosh Hashanah. Right? We're at Rosh Hashanah here, which is actually Yom uh, uh, Teruah, right? which is the uh, festival of trumpets. And we studied Leviticus chapter 23, and I said I wanted to bring like to a presentation, to present a presentation, to bring actually a visual um, side of it so you can see it a little more with the examples or like the parable in a sense. This is more or less the parable of it. This is an example of it, right? So here's where we're at right now, Rosh Hashanah. So if you've seen the other clips, the other vids um, in this series for the Rosh Hashanah, we had touched on this and now this could give one a better visual of the seasons. We have... Um, um, this is this will be the summer, right? This will be the summer season, the church age. Now this is the fall, right? This is the winter, right here, and then this is the spring. So if we look at our uh, Hebrew um, holy days and the Beit Israel um, holidays, um, the holy days from Leviticus chapter twenty-three. And in the Schofield Study Bible, the, the footnotes are very excellent because when we look at the feast of Yahweh, he who be who he be, his divine majesty. Now let's bring this um, first and, 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 and foremost right here. Okay, let's set that up right here. Now, this is uh, Deborah Tabor. Now, Deborah Tabor is often known from the Ethiopic as the Mount of Transfiguration the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus, where, where he was um, transfigured or his garment shone whiter and lighter and brighter, the brightness, the effulgence, the luminosity shone brighter than the sun. Now, what's very interesting, and actually, do we have this on, that would be, what, 2004? 2004. We're going to try to do one more search, right? One more search right here. And if we could bring this up, hopefully we have it downloaded on this particular drive, the, the calendar from 2004, which Ethiopically would be last year's calendar, right? Which would be last year's calendar. We'll, we'll check forward there and see whether we have it on this drive. If not, we'll try to present it elsewhere. It's from Ethiopia Kingdom of God, that particular um, um, website. Uh, remember, Nabura Id, 
and the Bore Eda Armias, we had mentioned him before. And if we look at his book, this is one of his books right here. Let's just show who it's speaking of, right? He wrote this particular book, Ethiopia, the Classic Case, a biblical nation under God that survived great trials for 7,490 years of its existence and ordained to invoke a divine uh, judgment and condemnation upon the world. A very interesting book right here. Um, Will the present generation of humanity hearken this time to the divine warning in order to avert another imminent universal cataclysm? And the message is delivered by um, Ermias Kabeda Walde Yesus. Um, Kabeda Walde Yesus, Ermias Nabura Id. Nabura Id is the keeper of oxen. And this is his picture right here with his imperial majesty. He was appointed as the keeper or the guardian of Aksum by his imperial majesty, Kadamawi Haile Selassie. And this is him with his imperial majesty, right? And this is a, a more of a fullness of the picture. You probably can see this picture out there, hopefully. Check out the book. The book is interesting. We do not fully agree he's part of that blame Haile Selassie, the first crowd, you know, was, but I think that he might be, by the will of the Holy Spirit, growing to see more of the fullness, the, the half of the story. You know what I'm saying? But he does present a very um, monarchist and noble um, uh, case for the church, for the true church, for the true Ethiopian church. Yet, um, there were some matters that we also had to write to him about. And as we said, we regard him as uh, Ethiopian of superior intellect, spiritually, as well as from a, you know, a, a academic intellectual point of view. And because he seeks to maintain those divine heritages and sees the difference between the true indigenous Ethiopian church and the Egyptian Coptic domination of the church for those uh, 1,600 years. Remember the autocephalous status that his imperial majesty was able to finally successfully conclude, thus bringing Ethiopia, that symbol of the true, that woman Israel, you know what I'm saying? Bringing the church out of Egypt. So here's a picture of him with his benefactor, who he has spoken some words um, contrary to, but some of that must be forgiven. You know what I'm saying? It's the truth that we are looking towards. So once again, this is a very important um, book. He, he basically recognizes some of the basic historical facts. And it's for us as a Rastafari, to study and show and ourselves approved. And we also have a revelation, and we also have truth, but it, we have to bring it together, these two families of the Lord, according to the scripture, so they may be one, right, in the hand. Now, with that being said, right, we just want to segue to that for a moment um, and show you who we were speaking of when we speak of um, Arminius, well, the yeses, Armias, well, the yeses, Kabeda, Armias Kabeda, well, the yeses, and the Bora Id, keeper of Aksum. So, let's see if we have that, um, his calendar, his calendar here. Let's see. Oh, we have it right here. Here it goes. Ethiopian calendar 2004, Ameta. Almeta Mehirat, right? This is a website edition. So we might be able to show you, okay? Kidanach, our covenant. And this was uh, from September 12, 2011. That's when our leap year. You know, in the West, they still regard it as a leap year. And that's caused some confusion 
among even some Ethiopians, Westernized concerning when's the leap year. They're looking at the Western and becoming disorientated. So we give thanks for the works of the Nabura Id, Armias Kabeda Wande Yesus, for his work right here. All right, so 2004, actually be 2011 to 2012, according to the Gregorian, the Gregorian calendar. So let's go through this right here, and actually let's get to, to the last part of it. All right, hopefully he'll, he'll be able to produce a, a new um, calendar um, for, for us. And um, let's see, where are we at, right? We are at the, let's see, we are at, uh, this is 2012, September, right, September. So let's see, where are we? Okay, the 19th, actually. The 19th, all right, Friday, let's see, what, which month is this? Okay, this is June, July, August, right, okay, there's Agume, all right, see if this is the same calendar right here. Um, so today's day, let's see, the 12th, the 11th, the 12th. Um, the 13th of September, 13th, the 14th, 14th, okay, September 11th, um, something is, let's see, September 11th was, uh, the new year, and then we're looking at this right here, and, uh, where's the new year, well, okay, the 19th, actually, this, this is the part that we wanted to focus on, well, work out that, because um, this, maybe this is an older one, and maybe he updated it. But when we look at the 19th, all right, right here, the 19th, all right, there we go right there, the 19th of, of September, let's just do a check on this, 19th of September, why do you have to send the Sunday? Okay, this might be an older one right here. Actually, we saw it where it actually things the 17th. We have to go check this out again. But Deborah Tambor, right, Gita Be Gurma, Be Gurma, the Lord, in, in, um, in glory or majesty, Melikotu, his divinity, Yatai Yabet, he showed in it. And it's called Yabuhe Baal. Yabuhe Baal. All right, and this is the reason why we actually brought this, this up right here. We brought this up to basically show and demonstrate um, that for the the Jewish New Year or the the Hebraic portion of the New Year, that it is Rosh Hashanah, which is actually the festival, the Feast of Trumpets, and according to his calculation from the other um, from the other um, that it actually was on the 17th and we saw how that had actually aligned the 17th being the, the Hebraic, the Judaic or the modern Jewish New Year and this is where we're at right here. Now we have there's a 10 day space right between the festival of trumpets and if you go to Leviticus Leviticus chapter 23, verse 23, 23, 23, the feast of Yahweh, of he who be who he be, the trumpets. It's a prophetic of the future regathering of Israel. So now we have the idea that it could be the first trumpet, might as well be the last, right? It could be the first, so there's the first trumpet, Right? And then there's a last trumpet. And now we know in Revelation there's also the symbology of the trumpets and these trumpets that are blown. All right? These trumpets that are blown in Revelation. And we're living in a time of Revelation, of Rastafari, of His Divine Majesty's Revelation. Now, ten days, right? Ten days when we come to Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, right? And then 
five um five days after five days after that on the 15th of the month we come to tabernacles now tabernacles or sukkot metzalet right or yadas ba'al is very important prophetically it's very important prophetically the feast of tabernacles which is likened to the lord's supper for the church it's both a memorial that means we remember we think about this and it's prophetic it's a memorial as to the redemption out of egypt according to verse 43 right it's prophetic as to the kingdom rest or the mengist senbet the malkut shabbat or the kingdom rest of the israel of israel after her regathering and restoration while the feast again it becomes memorial and it's not for us as beta israel as once lost but now found black sheep of the house of Israel alone but it's for all nations now there's a particular prophetic that we find in um, Zechariah in Zechariah um, uh, 14 um, verses uh, 16 to 21 so let's just go there we're in this particular season this is the fall festival season right the fall festival season Let's turn our Bibles to Zechariah. Now, Zakar, right? Zakar, Zikr, it means to remember or to think about. It's also the name of Adam or the first uh, male. When it says male and female, he created them in Orit Barasit or Barashit, um, the Hebrew Genesis. It says uh, Zakar we Nekebal. Or male and female male and female when did not say it or in the Hebrew Zakar right when Nekebal Nekebal or Nekeba as some would say but when we get to the uh, Zephaniah just on the kingdom blessing of Israel verses uh, 16 to uh, 21 right Verses uh, 16 to 21. Let us read this right here. Verses 16 to 21. It's also interesting when you look at uh, Zephaniah um, chapter 3, also speaking of the kingdom. Right? The kingdom is still, the kingdom of the king of kings is still in effect. You know, understand? But those who are unspiritual cannot see it, cannot receive it. Right? Now, Zechariah chapter 14 right verses 16 to 21 is the worship now I want you to make a note of the word worship because that kind of connects with the original subject matter that we wanted to touch on we wanted actually to touch on um, worship and some of the pictures of uh, ones and ones bowing to the Emperor you know saying and how some ones are unstable and unlearned and, and, and they make uh, erroneous uh, assumptions, you know what I'm saying, concerning the scriptures, Christ, bowing, worship. And it really comes down to um, the truth freeing up people and if they have a love of the truth. Now, here speaking of the worship and the spirituality of the kingdom, right? Now, we've got to define what worship is because a lot of folks think what worship is what they have received in different um, denominations or denominations of, of counterfeit Christianity and that's not what worship means according to the God of the Bible but here it says that worship and the spirituality of the of the kingdom it says and it shall come to pass now remember all this is speaking of Sukkot or tabernacles right Yadas Baal which is the seventh right which is the seventh of the feast of Yahweh of the feast of Yahweh let's move this over here for a moment right of the feast of Yahweh and here we have a fuller a fuller fall right let's now it begins right it begins with Passover Pesach 
Then we have unleavened bread, right? The days of unleavened bread. Then we have first fruits, which is that first day, right? Or Sunday. This is the resurrection day when you overstand it with the veil being removed and you see it in Christ and in Yeshua, right? Or in the Hadith Kidan. Then you have the counting of the Omer or the 49 days, the Subai, which are the, the seven weeks. Now, this takes place in the spring, right, the spring season. Then that brings us to Shavuot, right? We get to Shavuot, which is Pentecost, which is Pentecost within the new. You know how it says in the scripture that Christ fulfilled all the Old Testament types, right, all the Old Testament types. These are the Old Testament types right here. Then we come to the period prophetically, right? There's a, there's a space period between Shavuot and Rosh Hashanah. And this in, in the prophecy, right, is the church age. So the Feast of the Lord from Leviticus 23, it encompasses, it's like when Christ spoke the parables. And then when he revealed the Mishtir. Revealing this is like revealing the mishtir of what the Old Testament types are parabolically. In other words, the Old Testament types, the mishle, the misale, misale woch, you understand, are now fulfilled. As we say, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New, the Hadith Kidan, the Berit Hadasha, is the Old Testament revealed. So in this revelation, we have a space between Pentecost, Shavuot, right, or Shavuot, right, and between Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, right? We have a space right here. Remember the seven churches, right? And this is what we see in Revelation when we're reading about the seven churches, right? That's why this is the trumpet, and there's that trumpet that's blown as we see in Revelation. So there's a space here as there has been a space for nearly 2,000 years mm -hmm. until the coming of the King of Kings, fulfilling this end time and bringing the end time prophecy, these wheels, you know, saying these, these cycles to fulfillment. So we have what's called Rosh Hashanah today actually was the Feast of Trumpets, according to Leviticus 23. Then we have 10 days space between the blowing of the trumpet, and these 10 days are called the days of awe, right? And Judaism is called the days of awe, which then brings us on the 9th, right, to the eve of Yom Kippur. And this is the only holiday or the only holy day, which is not just about celebration and kind of happiness and joy, but it's a, it's a day to afflict our soul because it's remembrance of what Yeshua did for I and I, right, at Golgotha, right, of what he did. So it's a, that affliction of our soul for this one day, but there's, there's a 10 days. So this is the 10th of the seventh month, right? Then five more days, we get to Sukkot, right? We get to Sukkot. And, and the Sukkah, the Sukkah is the Das, or the, like the hut, in a sense. And it commemorates when Israel passed through the wilderness, and they lived in huts. It's almost like how we live in, many of us in these apartments, almost like a little hut. So it's a memorial, right? Now, when we're, when we're reading right here in, in uh, Zechariah, is now going to touch on it, because now this is, in the fullness of time, this feast now takes on universal or global significance. It says, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, right, the true New Jerusalem and Ethiopia, if you look at the map, if you look at what's going on in that part of the world today with the Arab Spring, the Islamic uprising all over, they say all this is surrounding um, the state of Israel, but they're not seeing the prophetic that, the prophetic Israel, which is Ethiopia. They're not recognizing that significance, but we, as the Beta Rastafari, we recognize that Ethiopia is the gates of Zion. Therefore, we have the prophetical Beta Israel. Now, it says right here, 
in verse uh, 16, it says, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left, so something, something happens. You know what I'm It's like everybody's building up to war. So we should recognize, you know, could be the first trumpet and might as well be the last, right? That everyone that is left of all the nations, all the Goyim, all the Gentiles, all the non beta Israel nations, all the non-true and faithful Christianos, right, which came up against Jerusalem, shall even go up from year to year. So every year, right, every year, every cycle, right, from year to year, all right, because this is, this is John's clock, overstanding John's clock right here and the significance of the feast of Yahweh, of he who be who he be, his divine majesty, says, shall even go up from year to year, from Ahmet to Ahmet, to worship the king. Right? They shall go up from year to year. Now, notice right here, right, between uh, Sukkot Tabernacles, right, this basically describes all the, the pilgrim festivals, but it's called the Shalosh, which is Salase, which is, which is, which is, uh, Trinity or three within the Hebrew. So when people say, well, um, Trinity is not in the Bible, say, well, what is Shalosh? You know what I'm saying? Shaloshi, Shalosh, Shalosh. What is Shalosh? Shalosh is the Trinity of Regalim or the three pilgrim festivals, right? Or Salase, Salase, uh, Maheja, right? Maheja, the, 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 the pilgrim pilgrimages, right? Or it's the Aliyah le regal, le regal. The Aliyah, the going up on or by way of the foot, the regal, the regal. You understand? The regal. So it's the Aliyah, the going up. So we have the three pilgrim festivals. Right? We have these three pilgrim festivals. All right? So or the trinity of pilgrim festivals. So here it says that he's to worship the king. Notice that, the king, the Negus, right? The Lord of hosts, or Yahweh Tabaot. Yahweh Tabaot. And now let's bring in Deborah um, Tabor right here. You know what I'm saying? Now let's, this is now the rev revelation, right? Let's put that right there, all right? So they show... Worship, that means, now what does it mean by worship here? What does it mean by worship? Perhaps we should just go to this area of scripture, right, and bring it up. Should we bring up in the Yota? Let's see if we can bring it up in the Yota, right? Um, and let us find out what does that word mean, right? What is the word um, worship according to the context? So Tinbetes, Zacharias, Zacharias. Um, let's go to click on that. We're using the Yota or the Iota um, software right here. Got a couple of programs. Let's pray that, you know, this doesn't crash, right? Um, and we're in chapter 14. Now let's, uh, let's uh, repaginate, repaginate the screen right here, right? So you can see this more front and center right there, right? Okay. All right. So verse 14. Let's go to verse 14. All right. I mean 16. We could have talked. Chapter 14, verse 16. So it says right here, it says, And it shall come to pass, it says, Bamarinya be Jerusalem lie, ka metut ka ahazab hulu, ye karut hulu, le ngusu. Let Sarawit Gieta le Egzi Abeher ye Segdu Zen ye Das Baalinim ya Kabru Zen Beye Ametu ye Wet Alu Beye Ametu each and every year Beye Ametu ye Wet Alu they shall go up they shall in a sense enter in but now let's go into a little bit of study on this right here let's Get the verse right here. Let's bring this window in a little bit so we can see both sides of it. Okay, and grab this right here. I don't think it can. All right, let's just bring this in so you can see this. Okay, this is the Yota. So we're going to go down here and you see what says worship right here? Worship. 
uh, we're going to click on worship, which is the 7812. Actually, it's what we wanted to teach on. Yes. Uh, all right, so worship is from uh, Shaha, Shaha, or Shaha, Shaha, they say, but really Shaha, right? A primitive root, it means to depress, to prostrate, to prostrate. That means to, to, to bow. Right, so when we see those pictures of ones prostrating to the King of Kings, there there ain't nothing wrong with that. You understand? Because he is the King, especially reflexive in homage to royalty or God. Now I don't know if you could how how clear you can see this over there, in homage to royalty. Right. Let me see if you can see this over here. Right. In homage to royalty or God. You over that right there? And homage to royalty or to God. Let's see if we can bring up that um, that pic that we had. I think we should have saved it on this disc right here. Let's um, get the window on us. See if we can bring up the saved Facebook page. All right, the saved Facebook page. Okay, on us. Let's see if we can bring that forward. So it's very important for us to understand this, because otherwise, you know, you're going to be listening to a lot of foolish people and, and believing foolish things and, and dishonoring um, the dignity of His Imperial Majesty and dishonoring God, you know, and dishonoring all true, righteous, and uh, noble faith. So, uh, where is it on here? Is it, let's see, where... Where's that picture? We just save it on here. I hope we can save it on the other drive. Um, let's see. Okay, that there it goes. There's the file right there. Let's see if we can find this. Okay, the the master file that will open it up. Oh, here, here it goes right there. There it goes. Okay, give it, give that a moment, and let's return to our study right here. All right, so. You should be able to see that very, very clear over there, right? It says to bow self down, to crouch, right? To fall down, flat. You see flat in parentheses, humbly, beseeching, to do or to make obeisance, right? Um, to do reverence, make to stoop. And then it says worship. So the last, when you start to study these things, you recognize that the last, right, um, one is most times the weakest one. But the translator, of course, can choose according to, you know, the translator's likes or the translator's uh, 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 dictates. Um, let's see, this thing is not, I don't know if this thing is opening up. Let's get the picture raised there, Christ. Actually, now we know why. The Holy Spirit said to begin with this, because we see we see now how this actually ties in, how this ties into that. Let's get the main suitcase right there. Um, I think we're using an older version of um, an older version right here. So let's bring this. Okay, get the suitcase. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Um, Honor the king. Honor the king. Now, all right, this, this thing is kind of slow right here. But clearly, if you, if you were to look up these words, because a lot of times people are fooling you because of mistranslation, right? Because of Gentile, um, white Western, and the white Western Gentile misorient. You know disorientation, right? So let's let's bring up that picture. You see this right here. This is what caused some of the, you know, um, controversy, right? Because some saw this picture as representing something in the ignorance of themselves, which they believed was wrong. You understand? It was wrong. But there's nothing wrong with this. You know, saying as long as it's to the King of Kings. You know, saying it's a true divine um, royalty, you understand, know, or the divine monarchy, and that which, you see, the throne of David is a symbol, 
you know, we was going to actually go through some of the Old Testament verses. But, but you see what it, see how it connects when we talk about the worship and the spirituality of the kingdom? I don't know how many of you all have a, have a, a Schofield Study Bible, and perhaps we should have actually brought that up as well, a, a Schofield Study Bible, so that ones would have no excuse and ones would see it, right? Ones would see it for for themselves. Let's see if we could bring up the Schofield Study Bible here. And we'll go right to Zechariah and we'll bring that front and center so that ones can see it for themselves. You understand? So we speak about spirituality. We say it's not about religion. Even I and I say, well, Rastafari is, 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 is not a religion. Right? Isn't that what we say? We say Rastafari is not a religion. It's a way of life. It's a spirituality. You understand? But we have to learn of what that way of life truly consists of. Okay, here we here we go. The Schofield. Let's let's open let's open the Schofield uh, um, reference Bible right here, and let's see if we can do a a, a quick you know a quick uh, speedily get to that part of the Bible. Okay, Samuel's. Right, let's go to Samuel. Right, passed by Samuel Isaiah. Right, and this is the same one you can download. Here we go. Zachariah. Right, right. We actually was there before. All right. Zachariah. Let's bring this. Go back to Old Testament. Zachariah. Zachariah chapter 14. Chapter 14. To show the connection of John's clock. You understand? Know His heavenly clock and the feast or the festivals of Yahweh, of he who be who he be in the connection now with his imperial majesty, with his divine majesty. So here we here we go right here. Can y'all see this? It's a little small. So let's zoom in right here. Let's zoom in. This is the verse that we're reading. Right? This is the verse that we're reading right here. Right? This is the exact verse. And it shall come to pass that everyone, right, that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem, right? Now, many people think that Jerusalem is the state of Israel, Jerusalem. We say nay, but there's a reflection. That is a shadow. See, we have the shadow and the substance, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the transfiguration. So let's understand that which came against Jerusalem, right, shall even go up from year to year, to, to what worship, right? the king, right, the Lord of hosts, or the first power of the Trinity, right, and to keep the feast of what? Tabernacles, right, to keep the feast of tabernacles. So how serious is this, this, this feast, right? Now we have to recognize when we're studying the scripture, this is after a period of time of some really cataclysmic sort of events similar to kind of like the times that we are that we are living in. All right? Some cataclysmic events. I mean just a summary a summary of this right here. If you look at the last chapter, there's a Gentile invasion, like we see what's happening in Africa, right? There's a Gentile invasion. Um and there's a there's the repentant remnant pointed to the cross in chapter thirteen, there's a repentant remnant that is pointed to the Mescal. There's the repentance of the remnant in chapter 12. There's a siege of Jerusalem by the beast and his armies, right? Jerusalem is strengthened. There's the Lord's Adonai's deliverance. The Spirit is poured out, we find, in 12 and, and 10. Just to understand what is preceding this point that we're at right here, because this is the fulfillment or the summary of the prophecy right here. So it goes on to say, it goes on to say in verse 17. So I hope we're clear, at least basically clear. We'll seek to go into more details, right, concerning worship, right? In fact, I think we was, we was here, right, and we were looking at Bathsheba. She had uh, died or died over here. Right, and that space is to shrivel up, but the idea was contract or bend the body, right? Contract or bend the body. And when we go to the very first um, use of, uh, I think we were looking up uh, worship, 
right? We're looking at worship right here. And worship is found in the in the Old and the New Testament. Let's uh, wait for this to complete its search. About 188 times, right? And when we look at the first reference to, to worship, it is in Genesis 22 and 5, where Abraham was saying to his young men that him and Yitzhak, the Mohammedans, they say that it was Ishmael, or Shittam, but it was Yitzhak, right? When they, they were going to go, I and the lad will go yonder to worship. Now, if, you, um, if we click on that word worship right here, it's the very same uh, 7812, uh, right? And here we go down here, 7812. You see this down here? This is the word right here. Shahaha. Shaha. To depress, to prostrate, especially reflexive in homage. You see that right there? To royalty or God. And we can show you throughout the scripture. It's used for both the divine royalty or the Davidic royalty as well as for God. Then it says down here, it shows you some of the other KJV, the usage, bow, bow, self down. So when it says crouch, when it says fall down, like fall down flat to humbly beseech, right? To do or make obeisance, to do reverence, to make to stoop, and to make to worship. And this is exactly what we're seeing right here. This is exactly what we're seeing in this particular image right over here. Some of these other programs are going to have to, okay, let's close that so we can get a little more speed on this machine, right? But this is exactly what we are witnessing when we see these photos from Davidic Ethiopia concerning his imperial majesty. So it was kind of interesting looking at that particular discussion. That was actually what we had began off to say. That is what we originally wanted to, um, you know, what we really originally wanted to touch on as far as a, a lecture or a lesson. So let's close this. Let's close this right here to show that, ain't, you know, there's nothing strange here besides ones who, you know, don't know what they just don't know. And so let's close this. Let's close that right there. All right, bring some of that. Now, yeah, we got a lot of windows. That's how we like to do our uh, studies and research, you know, seeing what these machines got. Can they keep up with the Holy Spirit? They really can't, but they, they, they do an all right um, job so far. All right, we depend on the Holy Spirit to, to do better. Right, so right here we have this youth, right? This youth, you understand, he is Shachayim. That's what he's doing, Shachayim, according to the scripture, to royalty or to God. We, we can show you David, you understand, in the Old Testament, it says the king should be like David. And if you know the prophecy, then you know that. If you don't, then you're speaking about things that you don't know. Now, as we go further, in fact, let's just keep this picture on the screen and go over it one more time. 14 and 16, Zechariah. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, to worship the king, right? The Lord of hosts, Yahweh of our oaks, or Yeshadawit Geetah, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles or booths. It's interesting when you look at even this picture right here, it almost looks like booths. In a sense, it looks like a tent. Actually, when I looked at it, it, lo it looks almost like a tent. You know, was, if you study some of the pictures, some of them are actually tents, right? Which are tabernacles. In other words, that's the word tabernacle or dwelling. The idea of dwelling, indwelling, right? And it shall be that whoso, that means whoever it might be, that will not come up of all the families of the earth. So no matter what nation or what nationality. They may be in this, in this kingdom age. We're speaking of the kingdom age to come. You understand? But first, there must be a fight before victory. Right? There's a fight before victory. As Matt says, we will, you know, fight if necessary. 
you know, as we shall win. And we're confident in the victory of good over evil. And it says, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth to Jerusalem, and the new, the Adesiti to Jerusalem, speaking of Addis Ababa, speaking of Ethiopia, right, in the kingdom age, to worship the Negus, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Baot, the Hashem, Kedamawi, Haila Selase, even upon them shall be no rain. That's interesting when we think about, you know, what we were, actually a previous vid, a vid that we touched on. Let's see if we can bring this up. Um, the seven fat cows and the seven starving cows. I don't know if any of y'all got a chance to check that out, but if you look at some of the pictures right here, let's uh, bring up some of the pictures right here. Okay, look what we got here. We got the Nile, right? The Nile River, right? The Nile River. Let's see if we can get this a little tighter right here, right? The Nile River, right? Here we go. This is as tight as we can in this tight window here, the Nile River, right? And that's the Giza. You know what I'm saying? The Giza, the uh, Agazi, that's Orion's Belt, or those three um, pyramids there. And Helena Lehman has some interesting um, correlation on her page, and it reminds her now of, the, of, of, of Golgotha and Calvary. You see, see Ethiopia, the water source, year-round, water flow, the source of the Nile waters, and now all these dams, that a lot of these dams that have been built around the world are actually stopping the natural flow of the water cycle. So how interesting is that? Because it says that, that there should be no rain, right? There should be no rain upon them. They shall have no rain if they do not come up to Shaha, right? If they don't come up to Shaha, to worship, right, to bow, to bend, to genuflect, you know. See, a lot of folks have been taught, uh, told a lot of silly things by counterfeit, you know, counterfeit Christianity and counterfeit Christians. And, and that's a shame because a lot of people are suffering when they don't have to. That's why the truth is so important. So you see this connection right here? You see this connection to Ethiopia and what we're speaking about in fact. This is such an important clip here. We just had to try to take a screenshot of it. And let's see if we can just paste this screenshot right here. Okay, well, we have it of this. So you see the connection right here? We're speaking about there should be no rain. So you see the connection of Ethiopia. You see the connection with Sukkot in the kingdom in the millennial, in the millennial age, right? All right, so let us let us go forward. So it says that... Whoever it is, no matter what family, they can say they're whatever family they may be of, you know, whatever their nobility, you know, whatever their religion is in the kingdom age, all right, that if they don't come up, right, to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, right, the power of the Trinity, right, there shall be no rain upon them. Verse 18 says, and if the family of Egypt, which is just down the block, right? Egypt is just down the road. If the family of Egypt, whether they be these Egyptians or another set of Egyptians, it says if the family of Egypt go not up, if they don't go up, if they don't go ali up, right, aliyah, if they don't go up during the time of Sukkot or tabernacles, right, if they, if they go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh, he who be who he be, his divine majesty will smite the heathen, smite the Goyim, right, the non beta Israel peoples, the non-Hebrew peoples, right, it says, shall smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Let's see how important this tabernacles is. Is dwelling in tents for these, what, seven days? And then the eighth day is the Shabbat, right? That eighth day Shabbat, where actually is the final Torah portion reading that actually takes place really around that time. And when we see how it all aligns together, then the Simchat Torah begins off the joy of the Torah 
the cycle, right? So it says right here, right? It says right here that that this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations. So there's a particular focus on Egypt and there's a particular geographical connection with where the source of the waters, right, as well as with Egypt is, right? And we can go into a little more details on that, but suffice it to say that this shall be the punishment of Egypt, whether they're Coptic or Mohammedan or whatever, but this shall be their punishment and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep, you see, to keep what? The Feast of Tabernacles. Verse 20, In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses that which is written, Holiness, Kedisna, Le'egeziarihira, Kedisna, Le'yahuwah, Holiness to he who be who he be. And the pots of Yahweh's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Verse 21, Yea, I will, I want every pot in Jerusalem and in Yehuda and in Judah shall be kedisana, shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts, to Yahweh of Baalot. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take them and seize therein. So what a ital, what a ital you, you know what I'm saying? What ital you shall be. And in that day, this is so very interesting. I mean, it's so interesting that we just need to bring up um, the scope field right here so you can see this for yourself, right? Let's go to the 21st, 21st verse, right? This is what we've been reading, the scope field. Oh, there we go right there. It says, yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Yehuda or and in Judah shall be holiness. That means no pork, no swine, no dog, you understand, no cat, no rabbit, none, none of that. That's, that's not going on no more. You understand, all this foul food, all this, this non, um, what do they say, non-kosher, ones will say, non-tahor, you understand, all that which is teruah uh, and uh, actually. It's a connection with the word clean, and I want to touch on kosher how perhaps we should not say kosher, really, because where it appears in the scripture, and that's more from Ashkenazi, so-called Judaism. So if you want to ask a Nazi, you can get that interpretation. But if you go to the Torah itself, you'll find something very interesting. So a lot of times at first we do a lot of things because, you know, we're still like young children, but as we grow, as we study and learn the truth for ourselves, all right, so that's another reason that put it down there. Anyone who want to have a private reasoning about it in time and opportunity permits will get into that reasoning on why we should not use the word kosher. You understand? It doesn't appear in the chapter that they call kosher. All right? That's just that's, that's a summary right there. But it says, yea, every part in the Jerusalem and in Yehuda shall be kedisana. It's speaking of what Rastafari, when we say about aita, you understand, when we, when we talk about holistic food. You understand, or microbiotic, or that which is healing, that which is nutritious. You understand, whole foods, ho holistic foods, kedisana to the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. Now, this is so very interesting. It says in the last part of the last verse after the colon. You see that right there after the colon, not colon power, but this colon, right? You see that colon right there? It says, and, right, and in that day, that day, because John, John will be waiting there, right? There shall be no more the Kananawi or the Canaanite. Hmm, interesting. In the house of the Lord of hosts. Wow. So that makes us ask the question, well, who or what is the Canaanite, right? 
who or what is the Canaanite. Now, here's another Schofield study and reference Bible is 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 so very good, right? And we we know we're coming to, you know, the top of the hour right now. So let's just sum up on this, and we'll you know get into some of the questions and also some additional, right? The Canaanite. If you look, there's an E, right? That's an E and an F, right? An F next to the house and an E. Now, when you look at the E, right, you look at the E, there's some verses in the center margin. Let's see if we can bring this over so you can see how, how study goes when we are studying. We're just reading right now, but this is some study notes right here. So you can see over in the center margin, right, this is for the E. Right, this is Isaiah 35 and 8, Joel 3 and 17, Revelation 21, 27, right? And then it has, it's a little blurred in that scan. Let's look at the book for a moment. Then it has 22 and 15, 22 and 15. Now, it's interesting because the, the Canaanite, in a prophetic sense, is the merchant, right? Really the European merchant. That's what it's talking about right there. The European and also those of our people who follow after those ways. We'll get into some of that detail as well. Even though there's a whole controversy about whether the Canaanite is really blacks or it's white or is it, it, it's a little bit of both if you recognize, you know, everything comes from the dominant, the recessive genes and so forth and so on and birds of a feather flock together. But the key thing that it's saying right here is that there shall no more be the Canaanite, the merchant. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like saying what Bob talked about and he sung about old time pirates. Right? There's a prophetic aspect, right, to the Canaanite. And it's not talking about just white people. I don't want one to think we're talking about white people. It's not talking about really white people. It's talking about a certain mentality in the Lord's work. You know, as we have seen in counterfeit Christianity. We can even say that this should no longer be Cesar Borgia's as well, because it's all part of the same product, the same product line. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing that they're marketing. And if you look at what's going on in Ethiopia, and that has to be a whole other kind of vid with the sacred images, you know what I'm saying? Or rather the profanity, you know what I'm saying, to the sacred image that's going on in Ethiopia. I mean, if you didn't know prophecy, I mean, you, you really could um, lose, you know, your cool. But in understanding prophecy, it also teaches us and instructs us, you know what I'm saying, in spirit, you know what I'm saying, in soul, and also how we are to be in, in body and, 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 and also within the physical world, how to master the physical world and how to stay in the blessing. So just touching on this right here, we kind of went forward from the Rosh Hashanah. Let's see if we can bring this up just in conclusion right here, right? Um, and uh, you see that in fully? All right. So we have, once again, Jah's clock, right? Jah's clock and overstand the feast or the festivals of Yahweh, the true festivals of the uh, Beta Rastafari. You understand? These are our festivals. These are our holy festivals. So here we're at Rosh Hashanah, the festival, the Feast of Trumpets. See more in Leviticus chapter 23. There's 10 days on the 9th, right? On the 9th day at Eve, which is the Eve of Yom Kippur. You understand? That is that the, the holy day where we afflict our and our souls in, in remembrance of what Yeshua has done for I and I, but that's a, that's a one day right there. Then there's five days, right? There's a five days, and then there's Sukkot, right? Sukkot, a tabernacles, right? And then we have this space right here and coming around to Passover, right? Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Shavuot, which is Pentecost, the kingdom age, the church age right there. Right, and now we're in this time of the blowing of the ras, hasana, or the trumpet, right? Trumpeting the good news of the King of Kings and His Christ. So, understand the importance and the significance of even this particular image right here. The overs is very, very significant. And stay tuned for more 
touching on some of these questions about worship and bow, because folks probably got a verse like in Revelation, think they have us. But brothers and sisters, shalom, rastafari. <laughs>